Thank you, Mr. Lopez, for the world, for your time. Thank you. Uh, my first question would be, I read one of your tweets, I think, about a month ago, and you were saying uh, Africa's recent achievements have been huge, uh, tripled GDP in 20 years, better education, better health, uh, better governance. I was wondering, now with the SDGs coming up, where do you see the biggest achievements? I think uh, we, we have to be prepared for uh, what we are calling economic uh, structural transformation. And you know, it's a big uh, expression basically to say the way our economies are moving are not sustainable, one. And second, they are very much based on a colonial model where we export uh, from extractive industries products that are raw. We don't use enough our land or our sea. And basically we don't value, add anything to what we already have. And that is tantamount to say we are exporting the jobs. So the next stage, the SDGs are bringing us the opportunity, is to create jobs. And that requires a different model. So industrialization is what you mentioned before. And industrialization is a way of capturing this uh, economic structural transformation. Okay. Um, I think two of the things that are still not quite there yet are energy and infrastructure, as you mentioned briefly. Um, I want to know, how, how do you think it's a way forward uh, in, in these two areas, in uh, energy and infrastructure? You know, in both areas, Africans have put together blueprints. They know exactly what they want. They have uh, done their homework in terms of identifying priorities. They've also actually come with quite a bit of capital already. Mm -hmm. um, so the gap, uh, we normally say it's about $100 billion a year. But $100 billion a year is less than what uh, Africans can mobilize from, let's say, pension funds. So the issue is more, how do we make sure that we put in place the financial vehicles that are going to attract the capital needed? And the biggest impediment so far has been not lack of growth, since we are growing quite considerably, but because most of our infrastructure, with a few exceptions, require cross-country projects and we need regional integration. Without regional integration, we are going to still tackle the issues country by country, and that is no future. Yeah, okay. Uh, and my last question in regards to one of your latest blog posts as well. Uh, it was entitled Eating Local. You were mentioning the dangers of uh, importing processed foods into the African diet, uh, maybe relegating this uh, healthier uh, lifestyle. So I was wondering if you think the opposite trend could, could ever happen, that. Uh, Africa actually exports processed food into the European market. Do you ever see this happening? Well, it's a very good idea because for some products, uh, some cereals in particular, Africa seems to have what are now labeled superfoods, mm -hmm. meaning oh, that they have uh, sure. all the complex uh, contributions from antioxidants like as much and exactly as okay. much as you know nutritional part, and I think. Um, if Africa really is poised to become an agro-processor, which is not yet the case, these products will be extremely appealing. And in fact, even for more traditional products like cocoa or coffee, Africa can, as an agro-processor, add value that right now doesn't exist. Because, you know, we are never going to produce Toblerone or Lint or the best chocolates because that is sort of a tradition that comes mm -hmm. from many, many centuries. But we can process good uh, cocoa paste, we can go up the value chain in a way that right now is missing. So Africa really has to position itself to be an exporter of food. Okay, that is all. Thank you very Thank much. You.